National Assembly Speaker Ayaz Sadiq has summoned Islamabad's Inspector General of Police Syed Ali Nasir Rizvi and Senior Superintendent of Police for arresting PTI leaders within the parliament's jurisdiction without prior permission, a violation of parliamentary rules. At least 12 PTI MNAs, along with other key party figures, were detained in various parts of Islamabad, including the Parliament House. PTI leader Ali Muhammad Khan, in a charged speech in the National Assembly, condemned the arrests of his fellow MNAs, calling it unlawful. In response, Defense Minister Kawaja Asif criticized PTI's rhetoric, dismissing statements tying the nation's fate to a single individual. کہ کسی وقت بھی اس میں نہیں سمجھتا کہ کبھی بھی اس ایوان کی تاریخ میں اس ہاؤس کی اور پریس گیلری کی یونانیمیٹی ہو کہ وہ بھی ہرٹ ہوئے ہوں اور ہم بھی ہرٹ ہوئے ہوں پاکستان کے وجود کو جو ہے پرسوں چیلنج کیا گیا خواتین کے متعلق زبان جس قسم کی استعمال کی گئی پاکستان کی سالمیت کے پاکستان کی یونٹی پاکستان کی جو آئینی جو بھی حسیت ہے ایک فیڈریشن ہے اس کو چیلنج کیا گیا اس کے بعد آپ کیا توقع کرتے ہیں جس طرح ابھی میرے دوست کہہ رہے تھے کہ اپنے رویے درست کریں تاکہ ان رویوں کے ریاکشن جو ہیں وہ اسی طرح آئیں جس طرح آپ کے رویے اگر درست ہوں تو لیکن جب رویے درست نہیں ہوں گے اندر سے یہ جب بھی بات آتی ہے وہ کہتے ہیں ہم نے فوج سے بات کرنی ہے یہ کہاں کہاں کس آئین میں لکھا ہوا ہے کہ اگر ایک پولٹیکل شخص کو اگر پولٹیکل شخص ہے وہ اس کو کوئی گریویس ہے تو وہ صرف فوج سے بات کرے گا سر یہ بیسکلی یہ پولٹیکل ڈی این اے کا ڈیفیکٹ ہے جب آپ لانچ جو ہے فوج کے ذریعے ہوئے ہوں تو پھر آپ بار بار اپنے اوریجنز کی طرف جاتے ہیں Meanwhile, PTI Chairman Barrister Gohar Ali Khan, who was arrested the day before, was released later on Tuesday. He questioned the legality of arresting party members over a rally that exceeded its designated time. Pakistan ki jamhuriyat ka ek kala din maana jayega. 10 September ka saha, Pakistan nahi bolega. Pakistan tahrik insaaf isko nahi bolegi. کل نکا پوش ایوان میں داخل ہوئے اور ہمارے دس سمنے صاحبان آریسٹ ہو گئے میں خود باہر آیا تھا میں نے گریبتاری دینی تھی ہم نے مزاہمت کبھی نہ کی ہے نہ کرتے ہیں میں نے اس عملی کے فلور پہ بھی کہا تھا کہ جبری گمشدگیاں نہیں ہو صرف ظلم کی خاطر ایف ای آر اے کیسز نہ ہو کرمینل پروسیجر صرف اور صرف بدنیتی پر بیس انتقام لینے کے لیے استعمال نہ ہو پولیس کلیریفائیڈ دیٹ دی ریلی ہیڈ وایولیٹڈ دی کنڈیشنز اف اٹس نو ابجیکشن سرٹیفیکیٹ این او سی بائی کنٹینیوئنگ بیانڈ دی اپروڈ آورز لیڈنگ ٹو کلیشز اینڈ دی یوز اف ٹیئر گیس ٹو ڈسپرس دی کراؤڈ اکارڈنگ ٹو اسلام آباد پولیس تھری کیسز ہیو بین رجسٹرڈ اگینسٹ پی ٹی آئی لیڈرز اینڈ سپورٹرز فار وایولیٹنگ دی ریلی ٹرمز اٹیکنگ لا انفورسمنٹ آفیسرز and inciting violence. These cases, including charges under anti-terrorism laws, were filed after Sunday's rally, with allegations of assaulting and injuring police personnel. Meanwhile, the Pakistan Telecom Authority has clarified that virtual private networks, 
VPNs, are not being blocked in the country, dispelling recent rumors. VPNs are widely used for privacy and accessing restricted content, with a significant rise in usage in 2024, particularly after the block of X, formerly known as Twitter. PTA encouraged users, especially IT companies and freelancers, to register their IP addresses for VPN use to avoid disruptions. The registration process is free and takes two to three days. PTA also mentioned that VPN regulation plans are being considered to manage network congestion, but no blocks are currently in place. In financial front, overseas Pakistanis have significantly increased remittances in the first two months of the fiscal year FY25, with a 44% rise compared to the same period last year. July saw a 48% year-on-year increase, with remittances reaching $2.994 billion, although August saw a slight decrease to $2.942 billion. Overall, inflows for July and August totaled $5.936 billion, up from $4.123 billion last year. This surge is a crucial boost for the government which is negotiating a $7 billion deal with the IMF and needs to manage $25 billion in debt servicing for FY25. The increase in remittances also helps reduce the current account deficit, which fell to $665 million in FY24. Notably, remittances from the UAE jumped 84.3%, while those from Saudi Arabia rose 50.7%. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during a visit to London, accused Iran of supplying short-range ballistic missiles to Russia for its war in Ukraine. Iran has denied these claims. France, Germany, and the United Kingdom have jointly condemned the alleged missile transfers and plan to impose sanctions on Iran Air. The three nations call the missile transfers an escalation by both Iran and Russia and a direct threat to European security. The countries also announced plans to cancel bilateral air services agreements with Iran, urging Tehran to cease its support for Russia. Ukraine welcomed the sanctions but said more is needed to address its ongoing struggle with Russia. In the latest military developments, Ukraine launched a significant drone attack on the Moscow region, resulting in the death of one woman and injuries to several others. The assault damaged dozens of homes and led to the diversion of around 50 flights from airports in Moscow. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov stated that the attack underscores Russia's need to continue its military campaign in Ukraine. Russian Security Council Secretary Sergei Shaigu added that Ukraine's actions in Russia's Kursk region are an attempt to force Moscow into negotiations on Kyiv's terms. Meanwhile, Russia's defense ministry announced the capture of the town of Krasnohorivka in eastern Ukraine, along with three villages in the Donetsk region. Ukraine reported that Russia launched 46 drones overnight, of which 38 were intercepted and destroyed. Gaza's health ministry reports 32 Palestinians were killed and 100 wounded in the latest 24-hour period. The death toll in Gaza has now reached at least 41,020, with 94,925 injured since the war with Israel began. In one of the latest strikes, Israel targeted a tented encampment near Khan Yunis, where 19 bodies were recovered. More casualties are feared as rescue teams struggle to reach the victims. While the Israeli military claims it targeted a Hamas command center, Hamas has dismissed this as a clear lie. Meanwhile, in the northern occupied West Bank city of Tolkarim, Israeli forces killed a man and a woman, according to the Palestinian Authority's Ministry of Health. Additionally, the Israeli army stated that American-Turkish activist Asenor Ezgi Ig, who was killed last week in the West Bank, was likely shot, indirectly and unintentionally. In Lebanon's western Baqa, Israeli forces reported killing Mohammed Qasem al sha'er a Hezbollah operative, in a targeted strike. Addressing the situation, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken condemned IG's killing as unprovoked and unjustified, and called for efforts to prevent further escalation in the region, reiterating the need for a ceasefire. UK Foreign Secretary David Lammy echoed concerns over the recent missile strike in Gaza's Al-Mawasi humanitarian zone, describing the deaths as shocking.